zero to 65, whatever, or looking for down airs so that'll just close out the stock right yeah. like that. I feel like what makes Falco such a good character is he has such a clear win condition of getting these, you know, huge combos, but as well, he just has so many avenues to open up to that win condition, especially with great hitboxes, things like, you know, the up air, the neutral air. Uh, as well, he does Upside. have... <laughs> 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 oh, that was pushed. <laughs> and, of course, all the, the throw combos. Right. And, I mean, as well, super important in this matchup is he does have tools as well to stop the opponent's win condition. Frame 1 Reflector, so important in this matchup. As well as just, you know, as a, a space control tool. We saw that come in so handy in uh, the set versus Dill uh, last, last Xenosaga. Yeah, it's um, having that little extra range that's very much less committal. As, uh, having that Phantasm, though, as well as a, almost a pseudo dash attack can use to, to cross stage very, very quickly and set up for some pretty solid combos. Oh, get oh, the a shield poke, I think. He crossed up with the forward air and then got a poke on the down air, uh, on the uh, up tilt, and it led to his, uh, led to his stock. The detriment of Rob here, and like I feel like Rob does so well against uh, all of the spaces except for Falco. Falco has that uh, has that X factor, has that ability to sway the game and to snowball it in his favor so uh, so vastly just by getting one or two solid hits on top of some really good lasers. Yeah, as well as I feel like Falco in general just does so well against. Rob's and I guess more specifically Dill's disadvantage. We very often see Dill like to stall off the ledge or go extremely high. And Falco is absolutely one of those characters who can just blow you up for that. He's got that insane double jump. He's got you know really long lasting hitboxes that will just blow you up off stage. Yeah, best double jump in the game mm -hmm. ever. I mean, he's a bird, he, so he'll you know, be a bird. Checks out. <laughs> Uh, Shoutouts to the second stock being taken by Steelix, by the way, off of a, a pretty staple um, frame trap that comes out on uh, the up throw combos. You go for the up air, you mit, uh, if they directional air dodge, if you're able to find your way onto a platform, that's a re-grab, and that's another up throw up air that you can have yourself access to, uh, which is why Smashville is so good, and it's almost honestly surprised that we're here in general. It feels like uh, Dill wanted to play the space control game, and Steelix is saying, hey, ha, but I have this platform, that lets me kill you. Yeah. Uh, still, still is there with the edge guards, though. An, a forward air on the Phantasm is going to net uh, Dill at the very least one stock in this game. But, I mean, she had to work so hard she for that very stock. Much did. Losing almost three, Steelix dying uh -oh. only at like 210. There we go, Dill finally looking for a much earlier kill with the arm order, but without a confirm, you know, that's going to be a little bit. A little bit risky. Obviously, of course, the spacey conundrum, as always, is that recovery. But I feel like spacey players lately have been figuring out the angles for Fox and Falco so much better, but not if you're not able to get them off. Yeah, the tough part is, uh, since Falco has that extremely high double jump, as you were mentioning, Force, um, Falco almost has access to, like, hey, I'm going to fast fall a little bit farther than you want me to, because, and then use my double jump to reset into a Phantasm position. That time, Steelix uh, was going for an early Phantasm and got hard caught by Dill, and keeping this game well within her reach. Like, Spacey's can... Uh, Spacey's, especially uh, Falco, is up there with the, the die early club, and he, yeah. <laughs> Rob has been known to to take some stocks at some pretty egregious percents, like now. Like, uh, you know, now. <laughs> yep. Oh, but the reflected gyro. Uh, oh. Dill has yeah. to get off of ledge, and she's not going to find her way off. Instead, finding a forward air for her troubles for the jump. So, what definitely seemed like Steelix's game from the start Dill, you know, started to find some momentum there at the end. So, you know, the set, absolutely not out of her reach. Yeah, I like this, I like this uh, entire play uh, coming out from Steelix is, uh, as we reset this. It's so simple, like, you reset with this, fo uh, you, uh, you get a forward air there that, oh, that's the one that takes the stock, I'm just reset it here. You're setting up this long ledge trap, and the point of this the point of being right here is you're trying to de-incentivize neutral getup, and we start getting that out of Dill's head. But then he does this pretty cheeky hop backwards, which is like, actually, what I'm really looking for is to cover roll. So that gets 
that gets in Dill's head. Dill starts trying to think, all right, he's looking very much more grounded, so maybe I can catch him with something fancy. Not so, forward air just covers all of that space anyway. Yep. Sometimes it's all about the little movements, and those little movements can cause reactions out of your opponent. Yep. So Dill bringing things right back to Smashville. Oh, okay. man. Okay, yeah, you're fine, but you're gonna... No, not finding the, de uh, the back air. Still with another lease on life, Dill has to work that much harder to find this, this first kill. And trying to pepper away as goes for it again, yeah, able no. to get the early tilt off of that arm rotor to catch the uh, the phantasm to ledge, and then just finish out the hit. Uh, that's what you want to see if you're a Rob player. It's like, all right, I force them off stage, I get them to recover in one of exactly two angles, and then I I catch that angle, and they're dead at ten. Move on. <laughs> yep. Next stop now. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's do it again. Oh, but great parry on that neutral air, the prominent counterplay. If you're trying to get all these setups out of falling there, then I'm not going to let you do that. In fact, I'm going to control your gyro, throw it down to avoid, to cut off that low angle, and keep trying to pressure, but the rising there doesn't find the hit, which keeps Dill alive and thriving with these <laughs> down totes. Plenty of them, but plenty stale, well, allowing that up smash. A little, a little too many. <laughs> yeah, just, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Up and out, Gyro out of play for Dill. It is spinning now on the left side, while still is able to get an insane combo of his own, keeping things right back in his favor. And another one. It's interesting how Steelix is very focused on the vertical, uh, going for a lot more up airs when um, other prominent Falco mains in New York, aka Tilde, will usually end uh, combo, look to end combos with back air or down air most uh, most often, as they're his more uh, fierce finishers. But Steelix is much more willing to just focus on like verticality and resetting with grabs or catching landings with up smashes. But that time, getting a little bit too overzealous, looking for a wall jump uh, back air in order to get back on stage aggressively, eaten by another arm rotor. Yeah, and I do feel like that is kind of matchup specific, you know, going for these more vertical combos. Because Dill is so comfortable off stage, because Rob has so many options, you know, she can stay out there for so long with, you know, the, the Robo Burner, whereas if she tries to do that while above Steelix, then Steelix can, you know, still try and react and keep the advantage state going. And if you're able to, you know, get Dill out of gas, then you can start putting her off stage. And now she's in a much worse position. Oh, missing the forwarder there. Uh, only 54%, but still, it keeps this game mighty even. Throwing the gyro the other way, though, that's uh, maybe a missed input from a directional standpoint. Still trying to keep gyro pressure, gets it down to Dill taking stage and taking a back air to Steelix's face, going deep after seeing the early Phantasm and closing it out three for three with the arm rotor. But great recognition coming out from Dill. She saw the early Phantasm deep off stage like that and remembers, hey, like, Phantasm is crazy, and it doesn't have as much end lag as before, but it still has a little bit. Falco does need yep. to return to a neutral stance after his like dashing animation forward, and got scooped up by an arm rotor. Yep, that's all it takes is one hit of that. Yep. And, and we get one. to see it again. And oh boy, do we get to see it? Uh, oh wait, no, this is a this is Steelix stock, I think. Yeah, after all these down tilts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just boom, keep boom, going. Boom, boom. <laughs> Did we send you, do we get to see the other arm rotor? Three I, for three. I do hope we get to see oh, another oh, arm rotor. Do we get to just hey. see? Hey! <laughs> uh, that's everybody's favorite move, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that hasn't hurt anybody at all, ever. No. All right. But we do have, I do believe, uh, Town and City was Gilix's, uh counterpick, which obviously we don't like taking robs to town and city but this is where steelix won a lot of his games against still uh last weekend the weekend before yeah and it may go into that matchup uh, perspective as you were mentioning uh for steelix going for a lot more up airs instead of finishing with back airs um on Smashville, with that uh, platform being closer to center you're not nearly as close to the edge of the stage while here you can transition your combos off to the side and find much earlier kills with back air, which may be prevalent for Steelix to, uh, to try and keep and uh, trying to get early leads and maintain them. 
Unfortunately, though, that time, Steelix, I believe, had the read uh, with the up smash coming, uh, Dill coming down, but the uh, the town and city platform, kind of the, the cane pulling him off to the side, like, no, you're not getting that one. There's another up there, very deep in the bubble, but not quite reaching the blast zone, able to get just low enough to poke underneath the arm rotor as Dill loses out on an edge guard and a great chance to set up for maybe a down air. As Steelix counterpoised that edge guard perfectly. Yeah, and I mean, Watch like it. I was saying before, these much higher level uh, Fox and Falcos, they've got these angles on lock. Oh, yeah. It's so difficult. I love Nair as an edge guarding tool. Always sends in the directions Falco's facing, and it covers so much space, especially in combination with Falco's double jump. You're able to cover all of that on a character like Rob, who can go from low to high very easily and go from low to high very quickly with that up smash out of shield. Some, a trigger that Steelix has been very willing to push. Yeah, and I mean, I feel like that does also play into the the stage pick, is getting these very long-lasting hitboxes that send outwards. So great for Falco. Gonna be killing that much earlier on Town and City. Oh, the reflect also changes the angle, intercepting with the uh, with the gyro toss. Looking for exactly that back air. Spaced well enough to where it did also hit ledge, so it could have even two-framed. But either way, Steelix decided once again to get aggressive, and once again got pretty hard punished for it. Uh, Dill is really trying to incentivize, uh, condition Steelix into saying, Hey, go to ledge. That way I can ledge trap you, smile. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, looking for a down air that time instead of a neutral air, uh, going for the high roll uh, down air instead of the more consistent nair. Uh, didn't result in a, in a stock, but I like the idea that Steelix is trying to plant into Dill's head. It's like, you can't get comfortable with me just trying to reset with the consisten consistency options. I'm still looking for to win this game. Yeah, at the end of the day, that's just a little bit more fear that's put onto, onto Dill's plate. Oh, down. <laughs> Rob down tilt. Gotta watch that shield health, though. It's getting mighty low, and you can see why Dill wanted to disengage, oh, but no. maybe going a little bit too far, trying to dash back from center in order to refresh that shield, but still it's chased. Yep, and unfortunately, that dash back putting Dill with some not great DI, getting Steelix that second stock, and now he has all the time in the world to start building up that extra credit. I like the I love the use of the reflector uh -oh. there to disincentivize Dill from going high. Ooh, that's so much damage. Yeah, it's, it's quite a hefty amount, and as we are piling onto 105, snowballing, not quite out of control, but we're getting close. Another forward air, not going to take it quite yet. Almost with the amount of rage that Dill Ooh. had going, but it, uh, that Steelix had going. But with the percents piling up and Dill falling back to just almost what has been, what was in early meta, a strong mix up from her, has almost turned into an Achilles heel because what is the, what's the weakness in this position? Uh, she didn't grab ledge and she didn't want to. She saved that double jump. I'm going to mix up, land on stage, maybe get a grab that you're not expecting. But Steelix is just waiting to see something, waiting to see a twitch, waiting to see a movement or any sort of grounded stance from that Rob to mm -hmm. throw out a forward air. Not necessarily a hit of the shield, just a reaction on pure eyesight alone. Yeah, and that really kind of has been the Dill classic. Yeah. You know, stalling just above that ledge. You know, sometimes, you know, oftentimes she will come up with a hitbox, but I feel like even then, if Steelix was looking for that twitch like you were talking about, if, uh, if Dill had jumped up with even, say, a gyro, I still feel like a forward air would have covered that and still netted Steelix the game.